Keynes Curry is Hobart's Hollywood sign. Keynes Curry Powder was created in the 1860s by Joseph and Annie Keane. They had a bunch of kids, seven sons and nine daughters, one of which married a bloke called Horace Watson. When Horace inherited the business, he purchased a barren patch of land, and in 1905, he created the advertisement. Over the years, the letters have been rearranged several times. This is a 1906 photo taken from above Hewan Road. In the bottom left, you can see the congregational burial grounds. It had closed in 1902. Falling into disrepair, it got to the point where bones began to emerge on the surface. Even after the remains were supposedly reburied at Cornelian Bay and the land was sold off for housing, builders continued to find human remains within the soil. But today, you cannot tell where any of this was unless you'd been told. This early photo of Hewan Road shows a coach heading up the hill. Built by the 1860s, it linked Hobart Town to the Hewan River. This roadway here is called Stony Steps. Today, Stony Steps looks like not too much more than a glorified driveway. That's really all it is. That's what it's been reduced to. But for a period of time, it was the main way that everybody from Hobart got down to the Hewan. It was a major highway, given the time and place. Stony Steps was part of the original track that connected Hobart to the Hewan. It went up the hill at the end of Davies Street before crossing the old rivulet and continuing via Ridgeway. It was called Stony Steps because it was so stony and rough and generally hard to pass. The dog and I are risking life and limbs here to walk across the Rainbow Bridge. You don't have to think about it, but it is actually possible to cross into South Hobart via bridge. And this is the bridge over that way as Denern, but just over there is South Hobart. And the reason why we're walking across here is because we want to get to where the stream beneath is coming from. South Hobart has a growing population of 5,500 and it is bound by three suburbs, West Hobart, Ferntree and Denern. On the Denern border, there is a body of water to cross. By the 1850s, the city had grown to the point where the Hobart rivulet was no longer enough to quench the population's thirst. I'm walking here on the embankment of the lower section of the Hobart City Corporation Waterworks. And I'm standing here between two foundation stones. This one is from 1861 and this one is from 1895. There's two foundation stones. There should only be one. The reason being that a really avoidable mistake was made when they initially turned this valley. A civil engineer was appointed and a plan to dam the Sandy Bay rivulet evolved. Originally, the idea was to build one giant reservoir, but part of the culture in Hobart has always included not allocating enough funds for infrastructure. The compromise instead was to build two smaller reservoirs. This is what the valley looked like before. The lower reservoir was built in the 1860s, and it was a big hit, everyone thought it was a marvel, until 20 years later, when it began to fail. In an emergency, the upper reservoir was built. When that was built, the lower reservoir was drained and the wall was repaired.
The city takes all its water from one valley on one side of South Hobart and on the other side of South Hobart in a different valley it fills that place up with trash. Croby's gully looked very different before it was turned into a rubbish tip. No dog. So I'm walking through this car park that belongs to the bottle shop and there's a weird feeling to it. it feels like something's missing and that's because there is something missing there used to be a building there but it's been gone for so long that everyone's forgotten all about it that building was the greyhound inn only half of it is contained within this photo next door the globe remains but the building is different and it used to look like this the cascade is still there on Macquarie Street, but again, the building has changed. The Wheat Sheaf Inn is no longer a pub. The Mountain Retreat used to be a pub. Nor the Joiner's Arms. The Northumberland Arms is gone. The Britannia and the Fortune of War further down are both gone too. And the Queen Adelaide Inn has been a living dwelling since the 1860s. Walking along on this bit of gravel here, this is a desire path. It's not being put here officially, it's just come into existence through the human desire to get across a piece of land. This is kind of a DMZ, a, a stalker zone that exists next to the southern outlet. On this weird bit of greenery, there's grass and there's flowers that have all just grown here through nature's will. But there's a weirdness to the place. It feels like it shouldn't be here. Most green areas in Hobart, that anywhere near a house that don't have a house or some other sort of building on them become an official park. You're not gonna put an official park like this right next to a freeway. There's something missing. Something's been taken away when that freeway there was put in place. And so you're left with this strangeness. But of course, today's just a sunny day with nothing else to do but pick flowers and walk dogs. Come on, mate. Come on, Harry. Come on. Lutana Zinc Works, as photographed in 1919. The zinc works prompted the construction of the southern outlet. Suburban development was moving naturally up the western shore of the river before the factory was built there. This interruption made families more likely to establish themselves in satellite locations, specifically in Kingston. Eventually Kingston grew to the point where a highway was needed to join it with Hobart. At one end of Fitzroy Crescent, you find a cul-de-sac. And over, on the now called Upper Fitzroy Crescent, you have a dead end. Looking from above, you can see the line of plane trees curving the full length of where the road once was. In this photo taken while the outlet was being constructed, you can see where the houses had already been demolished, but also where houses between Davy Street and Macquarie Street would soon be knocked down. 
The southern outlet decapitated South Hobart, so much so that all it is below doesn't really feel like South Hobart anymore. This federation home behind me used to be where Errol Flynn lived when he was young. This home and Errol Flynn shows that you can be from Tasmania, you can be from a place like South Hobart, and you can still be the most famous person in the world. But to do that, you can't stay. You have to leave. Not only do we have to leave, you probably have to go to somewhere like Hollywood. This painting by Simpkinson de Weselow is titled On Mount Wellington, near Hoberton, with a sod hut. Most art from the establishing period of South Hobart is a property belonging to the wealthy. This image, however, is that of a home belonging to poor people. Made roughly from loose wood, and sealed with mud and grass. There exists within Australia a perpetually unresolved problem. When the settlers first showed up in the country, when they showed up in Van Diemen's land, when they showed up in Hobart town, none of them had a home. But over time they did. And over the decades and a couple of centuries, the idea of homelessness in the mind of most Australians was something that belonged to other countries, lesser countries than Australia. But in the last 10 years or so, that problem has come roaring back. There's homeless people living in South Hobart, not in the frame of camera, but just away. It's always just out of sight. But it's not like you can close one eye and make the problem go away. When George Harris made his map, he was one of the first colonials to climb to the top of the rivulet. The first person to make that hike, however, likely lived thousands of years earlier, an unknown indigenous person. Aboriginal people had been living in and around South Hobart in fluctuating numbers for eons. In the 1840s, Skinner Prout created this nostalgic image painted purely from his imagination. By that stage, there were no Aboriginal people practicing traditions along the Cascades. That way of life had been destroyed long ago already. <laughs> 